Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. Honolulu, like Havana, is an island city. We feel that we can learn so much from each other by establishing a rewarding relationship, and that is sister cities. So, today, we will talk to my dear friend, Jesus Puerto. Did I get it right? Jesus. And he, everybody here in Honolulu knows Jesus as the, okay, Cuban restaurant on Bethel Street. And so, Sol de Cuba on Bethel Street. And then he up and left us, went off to New Haven. But we want him back because we are starting that whole thing with the city council to create a sister city with Havana. So, Jesus, aloha, and welcome home. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. It is so good to be here with you. It's, it, uh, and, 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 and you know that I did not just up and leave. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had, you know, there was, uh, I, we were just uh, overwhelmed and had some, uh, had some challenges. So we had to, we planned on temporarily closing and relocating. And uh, we're still in that uh, mindset that it's a temporary experience and we will relocate and reopen uh, again as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Uh, but thank you for coming out to uh, be with me out where I do, you know, where I reside at, uh, at Kahumana when I'm on a walk. I, you know, I, I, that's uh, a, a community that I've been a part of for almost 10 years with Father Phil Harmon out there. And uh, it was very nice to see you and have lunch with you at our organic cafe it two is, weeks ago. It is wonderful. The food is fabulous. All of that fresh Thank food. Thank you. Yes. They but, do a wonderful job out there, yes. So tell us about Jesus. Who is he? Where, what is your connection with uh, Cuba and America? Tell us about that. Because you are well, I, with a Cuban name, no less. Well, I was, uh, my father is Cuban. I was born in a born in a very small uh, Cuban community and uh, that's now a historic district uh, within the um, uh, city boundaries of Tampa, Florida. Uh, the area is called Ebor City and uh, it's the, um, the origin base of uh, the tobacco industry for the most part in the U.S. Uh, the community uh, was first established in the late 1800s, uh, around 1873, um, by a uh, Cuban cigar manufacturer and um, a Spanish real estate developer. And they built the first factory there, and Cuban uh, artisans uh, came over to work in those factories. And those were my ancestors, and, and a small in our community there. And many of them were very, um, uh, were actually anarchists and were um, uh, coming coming to work in uh, in those factories so that they can um, and they use their um, uh, proceeds from their income to um, pool their 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 monies and uh, buy uniforms and even machetes and and other resources to support the Mambi soldiers. Mambi soldiers are the rebel fighters uh, that helped to gain um, Cuba's independence from Spain. And that happened in 1898. Well, let me uh, add, but, add a footnote here, just for anybody mm -hmm. that doesn't know. From 1511 until 19, what was it, 54, 74, 54, whenever, with Adele. There was always 59, I think. 59, yeah. yeah. There were mm -hmm. always uprisings in Cuba to get the foreigners to go back to Spain or back to Mexico, where America, wherever they came from. So mm -hmm. the uprising you're talking about is a continuum, a part of the big picture. So yes, yeah, and it was, and it was the um, 
you know, the leaders of that movement uh, were Ant General Antonio Maceo, who was known as the Bronze Titan in Cuba, and uh, poet Jose Martí, and, uh, and, and, you know, and others. Uh, but these were the, if you go to Cuba today, you'll see the statues of, of these gentlemen all over. You know, they're the patron, uh, uh, the patriotic heroes of Cuba. And um, our family in, in Tampa actually protected Jose Marti when he was exiled by the Spaniards. He was exiled from Cuba and he spent about 10 years on the East Coast and time organizing with our community in Tampa uh, in, in the early 1890s and uh, was protected. There were assassination attempts on his life. Uh, so that, that this, this is the story that my restaurant tells. So the Cuba Cafe tells the story of this community. And so when you visit the, the restaurant, whether it's here in New Haven, Connecticut, or the, you know, the one that we had in Honolulu and one we'll have again in Honolulu, you'll see the story uh, through images um, that were preserved uh, by my family since, uh, you know, the, again, the late 1800s. Uh, we have frame, framed uh, photos, uh, you know, showcasing uh, that story. We, I have um, images and um, original cigar labels that, uh, that um, uh, used as decor around the restaurant. And, um, and we also tell the story of our, of our spiritual traditions traditions that were brought over um, through the slave trade to Cuba from Africa. And um, we have iconic images of our, uh, um, in Christian terms, we could argue that they were angels or saints. You know, I call them you know, cosmic forces um, who have names. What are their you know, names? And, well, I can't give you all of their names well, because I don't know them all, but they're but the ones that we have. Uh, that in our restaurant, yes, we have, uh, Oshun. Oshun, Oshun is, is uh, everybody knows Oshun, I think. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> we know <laughs> her okay. as 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 Mother Earth, uh, and um, uh, she was uh, uh, the um, embodiment of love and beauty. And uh, our stories say that she showed human how to take soil and mix sweet water with it and seed and grow things so that uh, humans could sustain themselves. So the, that's, uh, that's our story. We have images of, of Yemaya, who was um, in charge of the seas and the ocean. She was the patron saint of our sailors and fishermen. And um, um, we have images as well of Babalu Aye, who you know we all know was made famous by Desi Arnaz in the Lucille Ball show, um, and um, he is a, a uh, his energy is known to be uh, a healer. Uh, you know, so these stories were very important and still are today in Cuba uh, for our, our our family and friends who 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 are practitioners in the um, uh, the spiritual tradition of Lukumi. And um, also, it is known to, you know, very well known throughout Cuba and many parts of the world that it was synchronized with uh, Roman Catholic uh, spiritual traditions to, um, uh, and that was, it was, it was done because uh, the African slaves who had their traditions were, uh, wanted to preserve their knowledge and, um, uh, but the, the, the Spanish missionaries, priests, uh, uh, wanted to, you know, were more interested in converting them to Catholicism. So they they fused the saints uh, with their deities, and uh, and in modern times we look at that combined practice as Santeria. Oh yes, we you had a festival like. That. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah now, yeah, what part yeah, of yeah. Cuba are you, your family from? What part? What town? So my family is in Guanabacoa, Cuba, which is just outside of Havana. So Havana is the capital. Havana is the capital of Cuba, and Havana is celebrating this fall, I think in October, November, five hundred 
year biennial. Wow. So what, it so take? what does it take to be? This is a great time to go to. Havana yeah, I was going right to say now. Because, what does it take <laughs> to be there? Yes. Wonderful art festivals that are going on, and and many different forms of cultural displays, both uh, act to preserve some of the colonial uh, aspects and also modern uh, 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 um, art and and um, uh, artistic activities, as well as um, as well as uh, the uh, Afro-Cuban traditions uh, that have been really well preserved uh, there. Well, now we need to get this sister city underway. Now you'll be here when next week, the twenty third. Can you believe it's been twelve years that we've been working on this? Yes, twelve years. Yes, and I, I thank you for your patience and your support every <laughs> step of the way. <laughs> yeah, Twelve years you, uh, we've been doing this. And, well, yeah. but anyway, you will be here to talk to the city council about this. Yes, and, yes, uh, just a few weeks. Yes, yeah. uh, Councilman uh, Ikaika Anderson is pushing and pushing hard for this. He has been our patron saint for all those years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but again, a sister city is something, the sister cities were created by President Dwight D. Eisenhower right after World War II with the theory that we would not have another war if we got to know each other. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's basic. I mean, there's more to it, of course, than that. But um, he proposed people to people citizen uh, diplomacy interactive, as well as signing the check to fund the East-West Center. Uh, Sister Cities came as part of that. And that was the whole idea that we would get to know each other, to work with each other, and therefore wouldn't need a war like we had just come through with World War I and World War II. Sorry, it didn't work that way, but that doesn't mean we can't keep trying. So, uh, mm -hmm. Honolulu has 32 sister cities, only mm -hmm. one in Africa. And I don't think there's any, well, Central America, yes, but we need Cuba. And part of the problem is the stigma of communism. So, if we can get past that nonsense, because it doesn't exist on Cuba anymore. If we mm -hmm. can get past that, I think I think we can get make this happen. Yeah, I agree. And uh, now is the, is the time. And even though there has been some changes, uh, you know, obviously every administration uh, um, uh, shifts policy of uh, the U.S. policy uh, towards Cuba. Um, but the the uh, President Trump has continued to, um, even though there's been a reversal of many of the uh, forward moving, forward moving uh, uh, shifts that President Obama had made, uh, there's still um, plenty of those, uh, those those changes intact. And um, and I think uh, Trump made an announcement in seven, 2017 that. Um, uh, uh, there's still interest to uh, support uh, Americans who are interested in engaging uh, and seeking opportunities to do business in Cuba. So that you know that's still promising, and our you know our uh, commercial airlines uh, are still flying there. The planes are going over full. Uh, so Delta has flight uh, United, uh, JetBlue, Southwest. American Air, Airlines does as well. Um, you know, there's a the problem, the, you know, the part of the problem, is, you know, as the United States is repairing its relationship with Cuba, a wide variety of cultural, social, and economic systems in Cuba are likely to transform in a short time. So Americans will establish uh, with, with, with relationships and knowledge of Cuban culture, uh, government officials, small business entrepreneurs, health care systems, 
uh, and hospitality industry are needed to forge partnerships um, between Americans and Cubans. Well, and I you think know, that is where the opportunity is for us uh, with this. in Hawaii to connect with, through the Sister City program. Well, um, I, I think that given how uh, Trump feels about Obama, the fact that Obama didn't make this happen, I think he will just to show I did something that Obama didn't do. Well, now that, that's an interesting way of, of, of seeing it. <laughs> Well, and, and not a bad, I, you know, I don't, I, that would be... Um, Hope springs eternal. You know, I'm all for <laughs> just, you know, for, for, you know, that, for connecting our people. You know that. Yes. You, you know me very well. Uh, and there's, there's many, um, you know, we can think of many reasons why that, why that should happen. Uh, I'm biased. You know, I want the best for my families, both in Hawaii and in Cuba, you know. And I know that they... Um, uh, there's 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 so much benefit in in them you know in being able to to uh, connect uh, and and reconnect and for us to revisit and uh, how um, and share ideas best practice of how we can live how we are living sustainably uh, and better even improve the way that we uh, and our, that our ancestors showed us how to uh, live harmoniously uh, in small island communities. So well, there's this, a lot yep. to share. We need to take a break. And when we come back, I want you to tell us how you got to Hawaii. Okay? We'll be okay. back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Marcia and we're back. And we're talking to a dear, dear friend you only, you know I only talk to dear friends. So, Jesus, my darling friend, uh, tell us how Jesus from Tampa and Cuba gets to Hawaii. Uh, well, tell us about that journey because that's that's a great story. Well, yeah, it's a, it's kind of even even today I I I can't believe how. I ended up in Hawaii. It's uh, um, but so I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Samoa, uh, in the South Pacific, from 1998 to 2000, and then I also worked there with uh, Habitat for Humanity and sponsored by the United Nations uh, up until 2002. And um, um, I had worked in uh, Peace Corps headquarters in Washington in. Uh, and then was recruited to work with a charity in Connecticut that was uh, founded by Paul Newman, and that's how I got to New Haven. Um, eventually, um, I found a, an opportunity to to open the first Soul to Cuba in downtown New Haven, uh, right uh, a block uh, from the entrance of Yale University, where uh, actually we just celebrated 14 years here. And um, and uh, I thought I wanted to showcase um, uh, my my culture uh, uh, and 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 the food, uh, the music, um, but I also uh, uh, had the vision to um, take this story back to Samoa and live with um, 
you know, with my host family that adopted me when I had been a Peace Corps volunteer. So I thought, well, it'd be great if I can go back to Samoa and uh, be able to economically sustain myself by way of this story. Set up a, a shop, uh, um, um, display the images, and tell this story in exchange for being allowed, you know, a chance to to live and continue uh, the wonderful lifestyle that I that I enjoyed uh, there in the South Pacific. Um, Six months after opening this location uh, in New Haven, I was uh, on a uh, on on uh, preparing to leave for Samoa to meet with agent, real estate agents and explore the possibility of opening the restaurant there. When a gentleman uh, uh, visited my restaurant and was just uh, uh, describing how he was in, he always enjoyed the experience, and he asked what was our plan for expansion. And I, I said, well, I'm, I'm uh, on my way to Samoa. I'm going to stop in Hawaii, but in Samoa, I hope to, to open the second location. Uh, you know, I, uh, and that was all. I, you know, my, my early vision was two or three locations and, and uh, in strategic places around the world where I enjoyed community or where I had, you know, uh, uh, um, I thought that, that the story would resonate and that. Um, uh, um, um, people would appreciate the uh, uh, knowledge and about Cuban culture. So I, um, this gentleman uh, who happened to be the director of admissions for Yale University, and uh, he introduced me, he says, well, if you're going to stop in Honol Honolulu, you should meet, uh, meet a man named Jamie Brown. He's a, a real estate agent in downtown and, um, and connect with him. And, 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 you know, maybe you, since you don't already have a real estate agent. And I said, well, that's a great idea because I don't have an agent there. So that's how I met my agent. And uh, within uh, 11 months of that initial meeting and that initial discussion, Sol de Cuba Cafe was open in Honolulu, thanks to the efforts of Jamie Brown's office and, and, and John Selby, our, the agent that helped us. And um, that was that was it. It carried on there. and and, and I, it, what was one of the things that that really surprised me when I was there? What I is that I saw a lot of names of streets and different places that were in Hawaiian language, but they reminded me of Samoan language. And I saw this this interconnection, and it opened me up, and I and I and, uh, to the idea of of uh, which I had not known of uh, uh, of the interconnection throughout the whole you know the Pacific peoples. And I, I just couldn't figure out at that time. This was back in 2006. So I said, well, how in the world could this connection be? And eventually I learned about the Hokulea and about, uh, you know, Polynesians being, you know, navigated, ocean navigated, and being able to do so celestially uh, by way of, uh, of, of understanding the, the skies and the stars. And, uh, and uh, eventually I, I began to um, study more this uh, linguistic connection, and uh, because I also, uh, I, well, what I learned is that, was, you know, this, this, uh, in scholarly terms, uh, the language is referred to as an Austronesian language, and that uh, I was, um, I began to, to recognize this Austronesian language uh, in other parts of the, the Pacific all the way into uh, the Americas. That, but it was in, in, in the cases of South America and Central America, it was smothered uh, under Spanish phonetic. And then eventually was able to find this also, uh, this thread leading to the Caribbean and even, even uh, uh, Southeastern United States. So I found it very interesting. Um, and, uh, um, and I hope through the sister city relationship uh, with, with Cuba, we'll be able to. Um, our, you know, connect our, our scholars at the University of Hawaii and those at the University of Havana and uh, on this platform of a uh, very clear uh, linguistic connection, we can um, uh, uh, work to connect students and, and, and bring more into understanding and awareness uh, to this ancient past. Well, you know, uh, speaking of connection between Hawaii and Havana, Havana or Cuba 
has a reputation mm-hmm. for being the very best in medical care. And yes. their doctors, every time there is a problem around the world, they send their doctors out to help. Do you suppose that there could be a relationship between the university in Hawaii and the university in Havana? In terms Absolutely. of the doctors. Why not? Because that yeah, the, they have the best reputation ever. And and in Cuba there's no charge for medical care and the doctors go out into the hinterlands and you know, once you leave urban Honolulu there is no such thing as rural health. It's it's terrible. So that seems to me to be a fabulous connection between the two. I agree with you, Mark. And, and um, you know, I'm no expert in the medical field, but uh, I certainly uh, can do my part in helping to forge those relationships, build those bridges. Yes. Now, when again? When will you be back? I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. weeks. A couple of weeks. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, just to let you know <laughs> that I was the day he opened. Go to Cuba. I was one of his first patrons, and yes. there until the end. That's so, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> and the food there was is no end. <laughs> the food was fabulous. It was absolutely yeah. fabulous. And so, uh, yes, we are looking forward to Sister City, and we're also looking forward to you reopening Go to Cuba here in Honolulu, or any other place in Hawaii, for that matter. I am too. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marsha. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure spending this time with you. It's always a delight to talk to you, and we're looking forward. Uh, now, this is aired on YouTube and iTunes, which is all over the world. So if there's anybody that wants to support our sister city relationship, please write to the city council at honolulu.gov and write your letters of support for our sister city. And we have 32 sister cities around, and this is a perfect time so that we can establish better relationships with everybody. So again, thank you so much, Jesus. I love you, and we look forward Mahalo to seeing you. Mahalo to you. Thank you very much. Thank you to you and your team there in the, at the radio station. Thank you, Marcia. Aloha. Aloha.